After his freshman year, Tupac wanted to focus on his performance skills and his love of theater. He was excited when he found out about the Baltimore School of the Arts, which we will call BSA for the sake of the video going forward. In order to get in, you had to audition, so Tupac went right to work. With the help from his best friend, Mouse Man, they practiced tirelessly for weeks on end, running lines from a play Tupac was familiar with, Raisin in the Sun. Mouse quoting in an interview, we worked on it for weeks. You could tell Tupac was destined. Fast forward to the day of the audition, meet Donald Hicken, the head of the theater department at BSA. Mr. Hicken was immediately impressed with the young Tupac. Speaking about his audition, it was so good. The first thing I noticed was that he was extremely charismatic. From the very beginning, we all sensed he was the real deal. With such a great audition, Tupac was accepted into the school. Starting his sophomore year excited to focus on perfecting his skills in the arts, Tupac embraced being a theater artist, studying the greats like Henrik Ebsen, Sam Shepard, and Shakespeare. Mr. Hicken noticed Tupac's passion saying, though he wasn't an especially good student academically, he had a great sense of humor. Though sometimes considered as the class clown, he was incredibly bright and had a lot of intellectual curiosity. For one assignment, Mr. Hicken asked students to create a movement piece based on a song that speaks to you in a very personal way. Tupac chose Don McLean's Vincent Starry Starry Night, a song about Vincent Van Gogh by the songwriter best known for American Pie. It included lines like, you suffered for your sanity, and connected that suffering to being misjudged. When Mr. Hicken asked Tupac why he picked this song, Tupac replied, the song was about someone who was an artist but couldn't be taken seriously because of the world he was in. That's how the song spoke to me. And that sounds very fitting for Tupac, I must say myself. Tupac loved his new school, being able to experience acting in plays, different forms of arts like ballet or spoken word, to even making new close friends like John Cole, Darren Bassfield, and a young beautiful Jada Pinkett. John Cole quoting in a tribute book, Pac was always intense, extremely passionate. He was always on stage, always entertaining, and always hemming it up. Darren Bassfield, who eventually joined Tupac's rap group, said one morning while him and a group of classmates were rapping, Tupac approached him and said, I heard y'all rapping. Want a battle? Darren noticing how cocky Tupac seemed, but being confident himself, accepted the challenge. Tupac kicked the freestyle this time that he actually wrote, and not surprisingly, won the rap battle. Since that day, they forged a close friendship. Now, Jada Pinkett was known around school for being talented as well, impressing students and teachers alike with her confidence and skills. Jada quoted in an interview, It was the first day of school and Tupac came over to me and introduced himself. In high school, Pac was a little funny looking. Definitely from looking at him wasn't necessarily the type of cat that I would even deal with, but as soon as he approached me, he was like a magnet. Once you paid attention to him, he kind of sucked you in and we hit it off from that moment on. For fun after school or on the weekends, Tupac, Jada, and John would all three get inside John's car, taking trips around town, sometimes even long road trips to New York City. Tupac loved his school environment, felt it was an escape from his personal life, which no one knew but wasn't going so well at the time. Back home, due to her involvement as a Black Panther with the high-profile bombing case that made national news, though exonerated, the family name still was viewed as a negative in the press, resulting in Afeni being unable to keep a job. On top of this, to cope with the stress, she found her crutch in drugs, developing an addiction and was unable to fully support her kids financially. To help after school, including most weekends and nights, Tupac would find a job as a stock boy for a local fish market near the Inner Harbor, bringing home the little money he made for his mom, also food for his sister. With his mom strung out on drugs, causing a negative environment, which escalated into a strained relationship, to escape, Tupac would seek shelter whenever kicked out, staying over at some of his friends' houses like John Cole, who not only would let Tupac live with him whenever him and Afeni had a falling out, but also lended him clothes to wear to school. 
which now seems to be his most positive times. Enjoying his popularity, Tupac was known to blend in with any group, making people laugh and would engage in deep conversations as well. Funny story, one day Tupac and a classmate Seth Bloom was assigned to do a scene from the play Fool for Love. The two boys wanted to dig deep into their method acting characters, being since Seth's character was a drinker, he brought in real tequila in a jar from home. Tupac's character had a gun, so he brought a real gun to school that day as well. On stage, set to start their rehearsals, Mr. Hickens caught the smell of alcohol in the air. Noticing the jar Seth had, he walked over to smell the bottle, and he was immediately shocked, asking, you brought tequila to school? The boys replied, uh, yeah, the character drinks tequila. Then he looked at the table near Tupac, my god, you've got a gun? Immediately forced the boys to take their items back home, replacing them with iced tea and a water pistol. On a lot of school days, Tupac didn't have money for lunch, so he spent his time instead in the library reading books. Some friends saying they think he may have read every book in the school library. Being so young, Tupac was obviously stressed living a double life. Still connected with his best friend's mouse man as well as others in the hood, but he couldn't express his passion for theater or his achievements at school because no one in the hood was into that and would instead view you as being corny. While at BSA, he couldn't express the dire conditions he was actually living in, in one way protecting his mother, but also to avoid embarrassment or shame. Despite his stressful circumstances, he managed to keep his dreams alive, forming a new rap group with Mouse Man, Darren, and another friend, Gerard Young, called Born Busy. They made tapes that are considered Shakur's first recordings with eight songs that remain unreleased to this day. According to Mouse Man, we rapped, wrote our stuff, and worked every day. Our songs spoke about loyalty and friendship. We were big on that. Now a junior in high school, Tupac's highlight of his days was going to school, including the close brother and sister friendship he maintained with Jada, who was dealing with her own struggles no one knew about as well. At home, Jada was raised with her grandmother and mom, but struggling very bad financially. Unfortunately, her mom also started to battle her own drug addiction as well. After school to help pay bills, she started dealing drugs and while getting caught up in the street life, she still was driven, focused on achieving her goals and acting. These struggles allowed her and Tupac to relate in ways most students couldn't. Having extreme struggles in their own personal lives brought them even closer. Tupac, though, now on academic probation, his teacher, Mr. Hicken, would seem to almost marvel at the talent he possessed, saying he had big plans for him his senior year. At BSA, this year is considered the most important, dedicated to performance technique development with a lot of rehearsals and performances. It's 1988, with junior year close to an end, Tupac, though dealing with his own struggles at home, found school and friendships as a sanctuary that he cherished and was finally excited about his future. But one day, everything changed. As Mr. Hicken remembers, Tupac walked into his office with tears in his eyes, bringing the sad news that he had to move to California with his mother and sister. In shock, Mr. Hickens consoled Tupac, knowing how important the school was to him. He offered to find Tupac a host family that would allow him to stay so he didn't have to leave. That way, he could continue his passion for the arts. But a crying Tupac declined, saying, I have to go, I have to be there for my sister, that he couldn't abandon his family. That summer, Tupac was sent alone to live with Linda Pratt in Moraine City, California. Afeni and his sister would later follow. The time Tupac experienced in Baltimore was important to the artist, actor, and entertainer he would eventually become and who we all would grow to love. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe for more.